trusting us to serve you across our multi-channel and for being a part of our journey all through the year. Season's greetings from all of us. Trusting us to serve you across our multi-channels and for being a part of our journey all through the year. Season's greetings from all of us at Access Bank. Trusting us to serve you across our multi-channels and for being a part of our journey all through the year. Season's greetings from all of us at Access Bank.
trusting us to serve you across our multi-channels and for being a part of our journey all through the year. Season's greetings from all of us at Access Bank. Trusting us to serve you across our multi-channels and for being a part of our journey all through the year. Season's greetings from all of us at Access Bank. Trusting us to serve you across our multi-channels and for being a part of our journey all through the year. Season's greetings from all of us at Access Bank.
times a day we do it. Sunday. At what time do we read? and gentlemen, perhaps we need to rise again for prayers. May I humbly call on Mr. Gwengaido to lead us in prayers. Let us rise, please. In Jesus' name. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this opportunity. We are here to say, to show our appreciation one more to you. First, we thank you for the wisdom you have given the board and management of this company, of the bank. The growth they are witnessing, they are very feasible all over not only in Nigeria, here, everywhere. The wisdom to acquire even partners whose the quality of the assets they bring to the table, they are very, very good. In fact, the board will leave one to go to another because they were better to come up. I hope it's the same thing all over where they are really operating. But we're asking for this new structure. It's not going to be a structure that is not going to be geometrically uh, applicable to their growth. Rather, in terms of the indices of banks, capital appreciation, and en <clears throat> enlargement of the staff and management of this bank, that they can hold themselves anywhere in the world. We are praying for protection. We are praying for uh, quality of assets and capital. And then we pray for the successes of their customers that it will impact on the bank. That is the structure we are talking of here. And I hope they will need fresh anointing, wisdom from above, knowledge from above, to actually translate this on to what we want, what is going to take them from this level to the present level. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Ido. I'd now like to please call on Mr. Chuksmaha for safety matters. Mr. Chooks, please. Thank you. Uh, good morning, all. You all welcome to this special uh, AGM session, the court's uh, budget session. Uh, to make it a memorable one, we need to enlighten you with a few tips on how to make this safe. First and foremost, you're your own personal chief security officer, so I need to appeal to us all to watch our bags, phones, tablets, and whatever. We also, we're still in the period of the pandemic, so the COVID protocols must be adhered to. Um, avoid handshakes as much as possible. As we have san hand sanitizers here, if you must. And again, um, I need to let us know that in the event, which will not likely happen, of a fire, 
Uh, we have the automatic sprinklers here, so there's no problems. You're adequately safe. And if you have need to attend to the call of nature, we have conveniences to your left or to your right as you come out, uh, both, both gender. And of course, if you hear the alarms ring, like I said, which not happen, please do not use the lifts, use the staircase. Once again, you're all welcome here. And of course, I want to ensure, as we prayed already, it will be a memorable stay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Maha, for those uh, safety issues that you have highlighted. Thank you very much. This morning, as we give thanks to God already, I want to welcome all the esteemed shareholders, either by proxy or representatives of regulatory authorities, namely the Central Bank of Nigeria, the Securities and Exchange Commission, the NGX Regulation Limited, as well as the Corporate Affairs, our auditors, PricewaterhouseCoopers, observers, gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It's with great pleasure that I, on behalf of the board and management, welcome you to the court ordered meeting of our company, Asset Bank PLC. May I know if I would like to call on the registrar to confirm that we have a quorum for this meeting? Madam Chairman, good morning, Madam Chairman, esteemed directors and shareholders. My name is Bukola James Cole, and I represent Coronation Registrars Limited. We have five shareholders attending in person, 873 shareholders attending by proxy, with a total of 15 billion. 312,747,251 shareholding representing 43.08% of the issued and fully paid off shares of the company. With this information, we hereby confirm that a quorum has been duly formed. Thank you. Thank you very much. This meeting has therefore been duly conveyed and properly constituted. Accordingly, I hereby declare the meeting open. Please note that for participants via the online platform, all microphones will be automatically muted throughout this meeting. You may, however, type in your questions and comments in the Q&A window, which can be accessed via the Q&A icon. For those present in the room, please indicate your intention to speak by raising your hand. I thank you most sincerely. Thank you. I'd like to introduce, to commence the proceedings at this meeting, to introduce members of the board, as well as officers, representatives of the regulatory authorities, and advisors of our bank. I would like to start by introducing directors present at this meeting, in line with the order of court to hold this meeting by proxy. We are happy to announce the following directors have been duly appointed the group, uh, they have appointed the group managing director as their proxy to represent them at this meeting. They are Mrs. Antonia Kemi Ogumefu, a non-executive director. Mr. Paul Unsoro San, non-executive director. Mr. Adeniyi Adekoya, an independent NED. Mr. Iboroma, uh, Iboroma Akpana, independent NED. Mrs. Ifanywa, Osime, Independent Non-Executive Director, NED. Dr. K. Nwuke, FCA, NED. Mr. Hazan Usman, FCA, Independent Executive Director. It's non-executive. Sorry, Independent Non-Executive Director. Mrs. Omashalewa Fajobi, is NED. Mr. Victor Etoku, HCIB, Executive Director. Dr. Gregory Jebome, HCIB, Executive Director. Ms. Adiza Ambosa, Executive Director. Mr. Adeolu Bajomo, Executive Director. Mrs. Chizoma Okoli, HCIB, Executive Director. Mr. Olusheyi Kupamayi, FCA, Executive Director. And Mr. Roosevelt Ogodna, FCA, CFA, Group Deputy Managing Director. Also present are 
the group managing director and chief executive of our company, Dr. Herbert Wigwe, FCA. To my right. Thank you. And to my left, we have Mr. Sunday Ekochi, HCIB, the company secretary of our company. Now we move to introduction of our regulators. We are present here representing Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Musa Zuberu and Mrs. Idris Aisha Kasim. Online. They are not here, they are online. And we have the NGS Regulations Limited being represented by Mrs. Elizabeth Epo. She's physically broke. Thank you. We also have from Corporate Affairs Commission present in our midst, Mrs. Abiba Dikpo Adam. Thank you. The Security and Exchange Commission and the Corporate Affairs were invited to the meeting, uh, and they, some of them are monitoring the procedures virtually. I would now like to introduce the various professional parties who are advising us and assisting our company in taking the various steps that are necessary to implement the scheme of arrangement. First on the list is Mrs. Kemi Awodeni, financial advisor from Chapel Hill, Denham. We have Mr. Ayo, let's clap for them, <laughs> they're advising us. Mr. Ayo Lasaki, financial advisor, Chapel Hill, Dehan. Ms. Olubumi, Ms. Olubumi Fayokun, solicitors, Alukwa Anoyebode, thank you. Ms. Chidera Azodo, solicitors, Aluku Anoyebode, thank you. Mr. Kenneth Chijio Kekeme, solicitors, African Law Practice, NG and Company, thank you. Mrs. Bukola James School, registrars, Coronation Registrar Limited. Mr. Jibola Odedino, stockbrokers, Coronation Securities. Thank you. Ms. Chidi Ojechi, scrutineer slash auditors, PWC. Thank you. And we have Mr. Golaho Ashagbe, Fairness Opinion Advisor, KPMG. Thank you. We also have in our midst the SEC representative, Mr. Egbuniwe Ubina. Thank you. I also would like to introduce my humble self. I'm Dr. Mrs. Adjurisha Deri Awoshika, MFR MNI, Chairman of Board of Directors. Pursuant to the court order conveying this meeting, I've been appointed to act as chairman of this meeting. Thank you. We're going to process and voting. In the interest of public safety, having due regard to the Nigerian Center for Disease Control and CDC, COVID-19 guidance, the regulations and safe mass gatherings, and the restrictions on public gatherings by the Lagos State Government, Shareholders have been encouraged to refrain from physically attending this court ordered meeting. To this end, we welcome our shareholders who are following the proceedings, proceedings of this meeting via the video streaming platform. We also confirm that shareholders have sent in their proxies ahead of this meeting. Please note that voting on the resolutions to be moved at this meeting will be by poll, which means that every shareholder voting by proxy shall be entitled to one vote for every share he or she holds. The court order and notice of the meeting. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this meeting has been conveyed pursuant to an order of the Federal High Court granted on the 19th of November 2021 to enable shareholders of Assets Bank to consider the proposed scheme of arrangement. I now would like to please call on the representative of the Joint Legal Advisors of Maluko and Oyebodi to read the court order directing that this meeting be held, as well as the notice of the meeting. The legal advisors, please. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, I will be reading the course order first, after which I will read the 
notice of the court order meeting. Um, so, and the court order reads, in the Federal High Court holding at Lagos, um, suit number FHCLCS 1667-2001, in the matter of the Companies and Allied Matters Act 2020, and in the matter of an application under section 715 thereof, um, with the applicant Access Bank PLC, the order reads as follows. Upon this expertly originating summons, dated and filed on the 16th day of November 2021, praying this honorable court for the following orders. An order directing Access Bank PLC, also known as the applicant or the company, to convene a meeting of the holders of the fully paid ordinary shares of the company for the purpose of considering and if thought fit, approving with or without modification the scheme of arrangement, also known as the scheme, between the applicant and the holders of his fully paid ordinary shares in the form and context specified in the scheme document annexed herewith, or subject to such modification, additions, or conditions agreed between the applicant and the holders of his fully paid ordinary shares, and or approved or imposed by this honorable court. Two, an order directing that the said meeting of the applicant be convened and held in Lagos on Monday, the 13th of November, 2021, or such other dates as the applicant's board of directors may deem appropriate at 10 a.m. or so soon thereafter. An order directing that a copy of the scheme document incorporating the notice of such meeting, the scheme and the explanatory statement be sent to the physical and or electronic addresses of the shareholders appearing in the register of members of the applicant. Four, an order that the meeting be held and conducted in a manner that general meetings of the applicant are held and in accordance with the provisions of the applicant's articles of association, but generally subject to modifications as may be required to ensure compliance with the prevailing COVID-19 regulations designed to ensure public health and safety and public health and safety. And in particular that, Dr. Mrs. Awoshika, the chairman of the applicant, be appointed chairman of the meeting or failing her, that Dr. Herbert Wigwe be appointed chairman of the said meeting, or failing both of them, any other director of the company so appointed in their stead by the by the shareholders present at the meeting to act as chairman. B. Voting at the meeting shall be by poll, and each shareholder shall be entitled to one vote for each share each shareholder holds in the applicant. Only persons indicated as selected proxies in the notice of the meeting would be able to attend the meeting and vote on behalf of themselves and the shareholders of the applicant who selected them as proxies. Other shareholders of the applicant would be able to join the meeting and follow the proceedings online via the real-time streaming options, D. The statutory threshold required to pass the resolutions at the course ordered meeting is a majority representing not less than three quarters in the value of the ordinary shares of members present and voting in person or by proxy. Five. An order directing that if the meeting of the members of the applicant agree to and, appro and approve the scheme, a report of the court ordered meeting be presented to this honorable court for sanction of the said scheme. And six, an order for such further orders or others as this honorable court may deem fit to make in the same circumstances. And after reading the affidavit in support of the motion, sworn to by Mr. Sunday Kochi, male, Nigerian, and company secretary of Access Bank PLC of number 14-15, Prince Alaba Oniru, Victoria Island, Lagos, filed in this court registry, Ikoi, Lagos. And after hearing the submission of Adeni Yadebomire, SAN, with Chidera Azodo Esquire, Karimat Ijaya Esquire, counsel for the applicant, move in terms of the motion paper. And the court, after careful consideration of the application and submissions of counsel, it is hereby ordered as follows, that an order is granted directing Access Bank PLC to convene a meeting of the holders of the fully paid ordinary shares of the company for the purpose of considering and if thoughts fit, approving with or without modification, the scheme of arrangement between the applicant and the holders of his fully paid ordinary shares in the form and context specified in the scheme document. Two, that an order is granted directing the said meeting of the applicant to be convened and held in Lagos on Monday, 13 December 2021, or such other date as the applicant's board of directors may deem appropriate at 10 a.m. or so soon thereafter. Three, 
that an order is granted directing that a copy of the scheme document incorporating the notice of such meeting of the scheme and the, the scheme and the explanatory statement be sent to the physical and or electronic addresses of the shareholders appearing in the register of members of the applicant. Four, that's an order that's an order that the meeting be held and conducted in the manner that general meetings of the applicant are held and in accordance with the provisions of the applicant's articles of association, but generally subject to such modifications as may be required to ensure compliance with the prevailing COVID-19 regulations designed to ensure public health and safety, and in particular, that, Mrs. that Dr. Mrs. Awoshika, the chairman of the applicant, be appointed chairman of the meeting, and failing her that Dr. Herbert Zwick will be appointed chairman of the said meeting, or failing both of them, any other director of the company so appointed in their stead by the The shareholders present at the meeting to act as chairman. B, voting at the meeting shall be by poll, and each shareholder shall be entitled to one vote for each share each shareholder holds in the applicant. Only persons indicated as selected proxies in the notice of the meeting would be able to attend the meeting and vote on behalf of themselves and the shareholders of the applicant who selected them as proxies. Other shareholders of the applicant would be able to join the meeting and follow the proceedings online via the real-time streaming options. The statutory threshold required to pass the resolutions at the court's ordered meeting is a majority representing not less than three quarters in the value of the ordinary shares of the members present and voting in person or by proxy. That an order is granted directing that if the meeting of the members of the applicant agree to and approve the scheme, a report of the court's ordered meeting be presented to this honorable court for sanction of the said scheme. This order was issued at Lagos, under the seal of the courts and the hand of the presiding judge, this 19th day of November 2021, and signed by Azuna Bright C, the Registrar of the Federal High Court. I will now read the notice convening this meeting from the scheme document. In the Federal High Court holding at Lagos, in the matter of the Companies and Allied Matters Act 2020, and in the matter of an application under Section 715 thereof, in the matter between Access Bank PLC and the holders of its fully paid ordinary shares, the meeting of the holders of the fully paid ordinary shares of Access Bank PLC. Notice is hereby given that by an order of the Federal High Court, dated November 19, 2021, made in the above matter, the court has directed that a meeting, also known as the court's ordered meeting or meeting of the holders of the fully paid ordinary shares of Access Bank PLC, be convened for the purpose of considering and if thus fit, approving with or without modification a scheme of arrangement, pursuant to section 715 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act, between the bank and the holders of its fully paid ordinary shares of 50 couple each in the bank. The meeting will be held on December 16, 2021, at the bank's head office at plot 14-15 Prince Alaba Oniru Street, Oniru Estate, Victoria Island, Lagos, at 10 a.m. or so soon thereafter, at which place and time shareholders are requested to attend. Copies of the scheme documents containing details of the scheme have been made available to the shareholders of the bank. At the meeting, the following subjoined resolution will be proposed and if thus fit, passed as a special resolution of the bank. That one, the scheme of arrangement dated November 19, 2021, a printed copy of which has been produced for the meeting and for the purpose of identification only signed by the chairman B and is hereby approved. It, two, in accordance that two, that's in accordance with the scheme of arrangement, the 35,545,225,622 ordinary shares or 50 couple each in the issued and paid up share capital of the bank held by the shareholders B and is hereby transferred to Access Holdings PLC in exchange for the allotment of 35 billion, 545 million, 225,622 ordinary shares of 50 couple each in the share capital of Access Bank Holding PLC, also known as the Hold Co. To shareholders in proportion to their shareholding in the bank, credited as fully paid without any further act or deed. Three, 
that the board of directors of the bank B and is hereby authorized to take all necessary action to delist the shares of the bank from the official list of the Nigerian Exchange Limited. Four, that the memorandum and articles of, of the bank B and are hereby amended are set out in the annexure to this notice. And five, that the board of directors of the bank B and is hereby authorized to do all such things and take all such actions as are required to give effect to the scheme, including consenting to any modifications of the scheme of arrangement or any conditions that the Securities and Exchange Commission, the Central Bank of Nigeria, the Federal High Court, or any other regulatory authority may think fit to approve or impose. By the said order, the court has appointed Dr. Mrs. Awoshika of failing her, Dr. Herbert Wigwe of failing them both, any other director so appointed in the estate act as chairman of the said meeting and has directed that a report of the meeting be provided to the court. Voting at the meeting will be by poll. The said scheme will be subject to the subsequent sanction of the court and delivery of a certified true copy of the order of the court sanctioning the scheme to the Corporate Affairs Commission. Thank you. Thank you very much. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm currently holding a copy of the scheme document, which we had received prior to this court's ordered meeting. And in there, pages 19 to 22 of this scheme document contains the scheme of arrangement referred to in the notice of this meeting. This scheme document, to which I will refer to most of today's meeting, contains the following. A, the explanatory statement for you from the financial advisor of your company specifying the terms, reasons for, and effect of the scheme arrangement. This can be found on pages 13 to 18. B, the fairness opinion report is on pages 42 to 45. C, the scheme of arrangement is on pages 19 to 22. D, appendix A on pages 23 to 37 provides further information on the company. E, appendix B, on page 38 to 41, provides information on assets holding PLC. Company Secretary. The Register has confirmed that the scheme document together with the proxy forms for use at this meeting, we are dispatched to all members of the company with your account permission will take the scheme document as read. As you should have seen from the notice convening this meeting, the purpose of the meeting is to consider and if thought fit, approve with or without modification, a proposed scheme of arrangement pursuant to section 715 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act 2020. At this junction, I wish to say a few words on some key aspects of the scheme arrangement, particularly to its envisaged reasons and effects. Reasons for the scheme. In September 2010, the CBN issued the regulation on the scope of banking activities and ancillary matters, number 3, 2010, with effect from November the 15, 2010, the regulation. Three, which repealed the universal banking guidelines. This was done to promote a sound financial system in Nigeria by limiting the exposure of banks to higher operating risk and reducing the propensity to put depositors' funds to risky non-banking businesses. Regulation 3 stipulates the type of banks permitted to carry on business in Nigeria as A, commercial banks, B, merchant banks, and C, specialized banks which include non-interest banks, 
microfinance banks, development banks, and mortgage banks. The board is of the view that adopting the holding company, Holdco, the Holdco structure will be advantageous to the bank. It will facilitate the business growth of the banking group and expand expansion of services into under-penetrated regions in Nigeria, Africa, and beyond, and will enable Access Bank to diversify its business portfolios into new areas. The whole cost structure into new areas within the financial service industry that are permissible by the CBN Hold Co. regulation. The whole cost structure will bring fence each business from the risk of the other. By preventing the business performance of one business from affecting the performance and valuation of another. Accordingly, under the whole cost structure, the assets of the bank are ring fenced from the non-banking businesses. Benefits of the scheme. The following are expected to be the benefits of the scheme. One, facilitation of growth and expansion in banking across Africa. Two, better positioning to deal with emerging competition, for example, fintechs, and payment service banks and diversification into permissible financial services. Three, more focused regulatory oversight of the various arms of the group. Four, ring fencing each business from the risk of the other by preventing the business performance of one business from affecting the performance and valuation of another. Five, facilitating a consolidated financial strength of the group, which will improve access and ability to raise capital with benefits including lower transaction costs, amongst others. Six, expediting capital and liquidity and providing flexibility to accommodate leverage with minimal risk to regulatory ratios. And the seventh benefit, Unburdening the bank from oversight functions and responsibilities of managing the subsidiaries and ensure the bank is solely focused on its core operations. The effects of the scheme. The board considers the scheme to be the most appropriate approach to create greater strategic flexibility and diversification of the group's revenues. The scheme will result in shareholders holding shares in the hold co, in the same proportion as their current holdings in the bank, and the bank's shares being held wholly by the hold co, which will be a regulated entity for CBM purposes. The bank will continue to be subject to the full suit of CBN banking regulations and in all other material respects. The banking subsidiaries will continue to be subject to the oversight of the respective prudential regulatory authorities in their jurisdictions. The group's firm-wide risk management framework will continue to apply across the entire restructured group. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I will now give you the opportunity to ask questions and comment on all aspects of the scheme. Thank you. Yes, please. Let's... The board chair, our MD, CEO, regulators, and shareholders. I rise here to commend Access Bank for the foresight of transforming our bank into a holding group. The chairperson has enumerated the benefits that will accrue if we do the restructuring 
I'm particularly excited with the benefit of the risk management. I'm also happy that we are going to diversify into permissible business, which will increase our profitability. I believe after converting to Holco, the share price of access will go up. We commend the foresight of the board for the acquisition we have made, which has now proved to be profitable to the bank. We are happy with the directors, the quality of directors we have on our board. We believe with the whole core structure, we are going to uh, move forward. Chairman, my name is Dr. Farouk Umar, President of the Association for the Advancement of the Rights of Nigerian Shareholders. And as we have so many resolutions to approve today, I would uh, end my comment here by wishing the bank a successful meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Omar. And thank you for making it very brief. And uh, this also, you have set the pace. Uh, yes, from the back? From the back. Please identify yourself. Thank you. Madam, I needed Max. <laughs> the members of the board, very distinguished fellow shareholders, both those physically here and other members who are watching this virtually. Um, Madam, let me start on the notes of uh, one of the things that you talked about in the course of this meeting. I heard you asking us to clap for the advisors when you mentioned their names. And I was wondering whether if we clap, the advisors will give us discounts <laughs> the amount of fees that will be charging us. Uh, and it's important that you confirm that because if they are not going to give us discounts, I am likely to withdraw the claps that I've given already. <laughs> Let me say that my major area of interest, uh, realizing that what we are doing is basically moving money from the right pocket to the left pocket. Uh, the money still remains within the same body, so nothing is lost, really, as far as shares uh, is concerned. But I, I will be interested as to what structure are we looking at post this event and post approval. Uh, because looking at page 14, what I find is that we are going to run the banking and the non-banking, and that's why we're coming for OCO. But I'll be interested in what is the structure. Uh, ordinarily, the first reading that will run my mind is that we're going to have, other than the board of the subsidiaries, we are going to have three boards. Okay, that is my thinking. But I'm not sure that probably will also be the thinking of the board. So it's important that you also tell us uh, so that the understanding will be better. The second, not major really, uh, has to do with what you have on page 40 and 41. Uh, and I know that we are likely to blame the printer. Uh, and the reason I take interest in focus is that all that we are doing today is pointing to tomorrow. And the more of the tomorrow uh, that an informed investor knows, the better for him when he puts his money. Uh, because I heard Alaji talk about, oh, after this event, the share price will go. Uh, but I want to be led by fact. Uh, what if at the two pages in question, page 40 and 41, we'll find that we have 2022 two times. But I want to think that that duplication uh, gave rise to 2025, 
not being recognized. Uh, again, I want to be told that I'm correct. Uh, because there are quite a number of companies now who have basically taken out the year 2019 mm -hmm. out of their calendar that is the year that never existed. Are we hoping that there will be another COVID in 2025 <laughs> and it will not exist? Uh, that's basically what I'm asking uh, the question that I've asked. But much more to the event of today is the indicator that this event itself is bringing to the table. And I will want the MD talking about management and the board to also begin to look at what we can do. If we have an indication level of just 43%, it means that a number of Nigerian listed companies have so much work to do uh, when it comes to engaging the investors. And in this instance, the retail investors, because if we ask for records, I'm going to, uh, I will not be shocked if we have over 80% commitment from the corporate organization. And unfortunately for us, our market is slightly moved by the retail investors. Even when the corporate investors want to increase their holding, the only person who is selling and who they are mopping off from are the retail investors. So I'll be hoping that going forward, that this bank or hold co after today will begin to look at how within is the constraint of spending can get where possible other organizations uh, because when it came to COVID, uh, they all rally around because any country that does not have an informed investor, the chances is that we'll continue to run credit economy and that itself has this implication for our economy. And the last one that I also thought I should mention, uh, I am not Yoruba by tribe, but one of the things I've learned from my Yoruba friends uh, is that you hear something like Okurimeta, which means one man who has the power of three men. Uh, I haven't seen some of them do wrestling or do boxing. Uh, but when I then find on the proxy page that Habert is occurring 16, and <laughs> Abbott has broken record with the Eurobars. So, Abbott, well done for being occurring 16. Uh, and it's also on that note that I want to thank you, uh, because what has also brought to the fore now, that a number of us, and that's why I talk about education, who supported a number of Nigerian banks to move from OLCO to non-OLCO, basically got it wrong. Because they thought that, oh, because I have said so, Oga must be right. Very many times, Oga may not be right, but he has the muscles. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Awo, for those uh, comments and questions. Be noted, thanks. Yes, please. Madam, behind the white. Thanks. Good morning, our esteemed board of directors, ably led by Dr. Ajo Rishederi Awushishka. Our indefatigable MD, and our other directors online, I greet you. Regulatory authorities and our distinguished shareholders, I say good morning to all of you. My name is Olu Dewathof, um, and I'm the National Secretary of the National Coordinating Committee of the Zonal Shareholder Association. Um, some years ago, there was an advert of the then MD of um, our bank, where he boarded a train. And that train went to places that were hit or not within its reach. Now, there is a scheme of arrangement. I'm sorry, I have to put down this. Now, we have in place, we are contemplating uh, this scheme of arrangement, which, um, in my view, I may be wrong, but um, 
think by this we are embarking on another journey. Perhaps this time, not by train, but by an aircraft, a jet aircraft that will take us to play big places that um, were also beyond our reach that we couldn't get to by train. However, I, um, there is something I saw on page 45 of, the, of this uh, scheme, and that is the opinion uh, given by KPMG. And that opinion, if you look at the second paragraph there, and also the dates of the letter, it tells us that the opinion is at as 1st of March, 2021. Over nine months ago, a lot of things can happen in nine months. I like the opinion given by the FIRS. If we look at the date of that opinion, 15th of November, if it were not that our company, the face of Access Bank, that I, I predict that is going to take it, it's taking a, a jet aircraft this time, not train anymore. It is only because of that opinion that I have the confidence in this opinion given nine months ago. I think that um, it should have been early, uh, later than that, closer to the date of this meeting for us to, um, we like this word, take it seriously. Um, but that notwithstanding, I believe that uh, this scheme will put the bank, the whole co scheme will put us in a better stead, especially the ring fencing of each business, so that one will not affect the other, one going down will not affect the other. Um, so for me, I urge all shareholders to vote in favor of the scheme. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Top. Noted, thanks. Yes, please, sir. The chairperson of Access Bank, PSC, members of the directors, here present, my fellow shareholders, the regulators, and the advisors, I say good morning to all. My name is Patrick Ajudua. Mr. Chairperson, I want to sincerely key into the comments of the earlier speakers that the journey we are taking now it's a welcome development. It is in the interest of the bank, the shareholders, and all stakeholders. And I believe that it's a positive direction. And I only hope that taking cognizance that the security situation in the country and all other parameters we are going to achieve our objective at the end of the day. I want to thank the management and the company secretaries for giving me the privilege to be among the process and for this well-organized court order meeting. The chairperson, I would like to take you to page 40. You see, I'm somebody who is very much uh, interested in ensuring that those who work very for the company are duly compensated and, of course, are adequately taken care of. And on that page 40, it talks about the basis of preparations for compensation of directors and employees. As I said, I'm not against that. But when you look at the next paragraph, it says this is projected to grow 
at the rate ten percent biannually. The chairperson, are we also expected as stakeholders and shareholders to have our returns also grow by ten percent biannually? So that the two will balance together. They have talked about the the financial advisors, but my joy is that when you recall our quarterly meetings on when during the merger with Diamond Bank, I talked about the fairness opinion report, and Mr. Abad will bear me witness that I said that it is an addition that day to our report, and I thank God that when I went through this scheme of merger, I thought that report reflecting that you have a listing here and of course that has added more to our bank. So Mr. Chairman, I want to commend most especially the group managing director of the bank in conjunction with all the stakeholders in the bank, the committees of bankers, and back on intervention, both at the renovation of the National Theatre and equally in education. You see that this journey that they have embarked on will prove to be a turnaround because it will create more job employment, job opportunities, and as well, it will also reduce the level of insecurities that we are having. But of more importance and tax I'm sending to the GMD is the prevailing problem we are having now, which is the exponential growth in the Ponzi scheme. And that is affecting the banks in Nigeria. We will urge him and his committee members to do something along with the central bank to stop these schemes that to me have sent many to debt and to more poverty level. Mr. Chairperson, I commend the GMD once again for the Q3, and you have seen in these reports that there was a growth in the CAR capital adequacy to 22%, and of course, this is, of course, above the regulatory margin of 15%, and of course, the tolerable level of the non-performing loan at 4.4. But there is need for the GMD to check the declining result in the other comprehensive income. On a final note, Mr. Chairman, is to draw your attention to page 21 of the annual report which I will link up with the Corporate Affairs Commission deadline on issued share capital. For the bank, they're having 20 billion, and 10 billion has been issued, and for the OCO, we are projecting 27 billion. I will be requesting that we take due notice of this, along with the company secretary, that the deadline has been moved to end of next year. And the gap we're having, which is over 2.4 billion on issue share, should be issued out. Otherwise, we are going to be in, in breach. And any on issue share, according to the rule, will be de-recognized until when such shares are being issued. So, for the chairperson, I want, along with my colleague, to associate myself with this noble decision of yours to hold this, to go into OCO meeting. And I pray that it will, talk, it will be a turnaround for both the bank, the stakeholders, and the shareholders in general. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Judua, for the kind comments that you have made and the questions. Thank you. Yes, madam, please. 
Do we still have, okay, one more person after you, thank you. Thank you, madam. My name is Mrs. Bisi Bakari. First of all, good morning, uh, uh, my MD, chairperson, uh, regulatory authority here present, my co-shareholders, good morning. Once again, my name is Mrs. Bisi Bakari. First and foremost, I want to use this opportunity to thank the entire board and management for the opportunity given to me to be here this morning. I really appreciate it. Having said that, I want to use this opportunity also to really commend the initiatives of the board for the ideas behind the establishment of focal structure, as this will strengthen the growth and expansion of the bank as contained on page 11 of the scheme document. Page 13. Page 13, note 1.2, description of the restructuring. Uh, what gladden my heart here is our restru proposed restructuring of one for one. I read, on the effective date, each shareholder will receive one OCO share, which will be credited as fully paid in exchange for every one scheme share as a determinate date. I want to say a big thank you to the entire board for this. We really appreciate that. Lastly, page 31. Page 31, note 1.7, summary of claims and litigation. Madam, the issue of claims and litigation, a situation where we have over 1.93 trillion claim against the bank, as against claim of 59 billion instituted by the bank, is not healthy. On that note, I want to ask from the GMD, what is uh, the bank doing to address this uh, development. Thank you once again for the opportunity given me. Thank you very much, Mrs. Bakari. Thank you. And the last person is from here. I think there was a hand from the right. Okay. Thank you. Good morning. Your Excellency, the chairperson of this forum, the group managing director, and uh, the company secretary. And uh, joining us online, the other directors and uh, investors globally. My name is Kazim Olaiwola. Mr. Mr. Chairperson, I have uh, observations to make to this ongoing proceedings. Firstly, the board of directors of Old Co. will be appointed after our approval of the resolution listed therein in this booklet. But may I please appeal to you that uh, there are lots of work that are going to be done by the directors after they have been appointed and what it was. It starts from reposing confidence on all investors, both locally and globally. They should please take care of this. And I want to appeal to all, all shareholders here too to please follow suit so that at times when there is a going forward or an action by an institution, differences in opinions, divergent views, and counter attack will be coming here and there. But we need to enlighten our people more and more on this, on the profitability being focused by Axis Bank PLC. Mr. Chairperson, once again, the second advice that I have is for our staff, the entire staff, both locally and in the diaspora, to be empowered in their capacity building so that they may bring more profits on this business, whereby attractions of investors will be embarked upon vigorously, and it will add value to Access Bank PLC. On this note, Mr. Chairperson, may I appreciate the 
wisdom, and uniqueness of administration of the company secretariat for carrying us along to buy and key into the idea being proposed by this bank. 100% were in total support to these propositions. Thank you very much for your audience. Thank you very much, Dr. Olaiwola. Thanks for your kind comments and questions, all noted. We've also compiled the questions online. And uh, just before I call on the Group Managing Director, CEO, to uh, respond to the questions, I'd like to recognize Mr. Yode Gio Yetunde, Solicitors uh, Alokoano Yubode is present here with us. Thank you, thank you very much. It's now my pleasure, privilege, and honor to welcome the GMD CEO, Herbert Wigwe, to respond. Thank you. Thank you very much, my very esteemed uh, shareholders. I'll just make a few comments before I get into the questions. And the first is to, as always, appreciate all of you um, for the continuous support you've given to us. It will be 20 years next year. Um, we've never had a court ordered meeting, an AGM, or an EGM of any sort where we've not obtained your support and blessings. Even in the most difficult circumstances, all we have seen in these meetings is people who have supported us, all right, to take the institution to the next level. When we had our first AGM in, 20, in 2002, there was no train, not to talk of a plane. <laughs> you came here and you gave I and I all the support we required. We don't take those things for granted. Um, we've seen very, very fierce shareholders, and each time it comes to access, the idea is let's support these people to grow. So I just want to state that um, before I get in. But um, Dr. Farouk Kumar, thank you. I think he's left uh, for your very kind words. Nona, I think we're not going to clap for the advisors, but we have to clap to the, for them for just a good a job well done. And I'm not sure that we'll be able to reduce their, their fees. But I think we've clapped in advance for the next set of deals that they will do, where they will give us a discount. I think that the scheme is beyond the moving money from the right hand to the left hand. Um, it's more symbolic of a great future that we want to create. Like you mentioned, Nona, in 2010, when the central bank came out with a regulation basically repealing um, the Universal Banking Act, um, several people opted, like we did at that point in time, to follow the narrow banking definition. Because obviously, having banking in the manner in which it was done under universal banking um, introduced significant risks that it created a lot of problems in the financial services sector. We didn't want to do what we did not know well, anything well about, so we decided to just restrict ourselves to the narrow banking definition. And so we chose to keep ourselves as a proper commercial bank. But today, I think the institution has grown beyond a lot of all of those things. I think even the very presence of your institution in several countries requires a different organization structure to handle all of those things. If anybody tells you that there's one managing director who would oversee 20 countries or 30 countries, is a liar. We all have only 24 hours in a day. I mean, how is he going to do it? So we have to continuously evolve and create a construct that would ensure that there's proper oversight over the subsidiaries. So that's number one. The second speaks to some of the things that the chairman spoke about, which is the creation of some non-banking um, subsidiaries, which would help to diversify income, and of course the risk management that comes with all of that. So apart from just moving money from one pocket to the other, what it shows is that the institution is evolving, all right, into a larger and a different type of institution that will try to optimize and provide greater value to shareholders as it moves on to the next level. In terms of the governance framework, your point is so well taken. Um, the introduction of a holding company, yes, introduces another layer of board, um, necessarily so. If you went to the UK, they'll tell you about things around the heart and mind of an institution uh, being present in that, in that place. It will speak to issues around stretch and management capability. The cost of having an additional board 
compared to a weaker governance framework, I don't think there's any basis for comparison. So yes, you are, you are right. At the very subsidiary level, you will have a board. At the bank level, you will have a board. And at whole code level, you will have a board. Same thing for the other subsidiaries that have been created. But it has to be so necessarily as you continue to grow and expand. But I think the most important thing which we are trying to allude to, which is important, is that let that structure not lead to a deterioration or a reduction in profitability and all of that. Let it not just be an additional structure. And the point is very, very well taken. I cannot but agree the fact that there was a printer error. Um, a lot of people have said that the year 2019 should not be included. I agree with you. But we cannot forecast and say that 2025 should be removed, if you get the point I'm trying to make. We pray that it is still kept. So by the grace of God, um, this corona will end, and we will not have to remove any, any year. Um, HOKO will lead to increased expenditure, you're right. Um, and we will have a separate board for HOLDCO, obviously. Uh, we will follow best practice and very, very, very stringent governance standards to avoid conflicts. But you know, the reality is that the way the central bank regulates even non-operating whole codes is extremely heavy, all right? And yes, they regulate the bank, but they make very significant demands on the holding company. But let me put it this way. When you are growing from a one-country presence to a 10-country presence, and maybe a 20-country presence, there's something referred to as the College of Supervisors, all right? Now, if you were running Nigeria, and Nigeria is growing and growing and growing, and one day they tell you that you have 20 countries, inclusive of the UK, where the regulators want to speak to you, the burden of having that meeting in itself requires several months of preparation. So what all of these things try to do, and what we're doing, is to make sure that even at whole co level, in spite of the increased um, um, regulatory pressure from Central Bank, we do have a holding company board that can basically interface with several of those uh, regulators to make sure that our institution, as it's growing, is well protected. After all, we're not yet the size of Citibank. Um, and I'm not talking about Citibank here. This one is, is small. It's, our equivalent is the one in New York, you know? Um, so it is the same type of structure and construct that you see that is adopted even in those climes. So we're trying to bring all of those practices as we evolve over time. Maybe under a different leadership, we'll be present in 60 countries across the world. So the structure has to continue evolving, all right, to get to the point where you will be able to still control this vehicle and control it properly, following best practice, the highest governance standards in terms of risk management and all to ensure that shareholder value is optimized. Mrs. Top, thank you very much. Um, it's, the journey is continuing. Um, when I was here, we scripted a journey and we prayed to God that we would get to where we're going. He is still involved in some manner in terms of making sure that the boundaries are also protected. So you may say we've moved from the train into an aircraft. These days, people are using rockets to go to the moon. Maybe one day that will be the story too. But um, just rest assured that this institution is very, very well governed. I don't think our work practice, practices have changed in spite of the fact that we've added 20 years to our age since 2002. Um, but we now have younger, stronger people who are also supporting us in this whole, in this whole journey. So there may have been mistakes, as you've seen in the scheme document when I'm talking about mistakes, you know, like the 2002, those typos, et cetera. But I think the level of diligence still remains as it ought to be. The opinion of KPMG that was done in March, March 1st of March 2021, you, have, you know that this process is evolving. Uh, but just for you to also know that we also have half-year audits. Um, if there were issues, it would could have been picked up at that particular point in time. But I want to thank you for your endorsement in spite of that anyway, and let you know that we're we on the right track. Patrick, you spoke to uh, the issue of compensation for staff um, and directors biennially, and the fact that it should also be extended by definition to shareholders. Now, in the value-added statements, there's, there's, there's a portion which has to do with you know, um, payments for, for, for staff and wages, et cetera, et cetera. 
And you know, if you don't get people incentivized by making sure you are paying them the right salaries, uh, you will never get the appropriate numbers. But I think the returns we are beginning to see are a reflection of the fact that the institution is getting better and better and better. Now, how does this evolve to shareholders? It evolves in two ways. One, in terms of your, your dividends, and second, in terms of your capital gains. And I think if you do both of them, you will see that the institution is getting better. But my view to shareholders, as most of you are, is for us to always take a long-term view of where we are headed. When we did this thing in 2002, we were one of the smallest banks in this country. Today, from a shareholders, from in terms of total assets, total customer base, we are the largest bank in the country. And so we need to, <laughs> and so we need to retain funds to support our growth. Now we are evolving into Basel III. It's coming with its own demands on all of us. All right. So I think that we don't just see shareholders as residual, no. We know that they ought to be compensated. But I'll appeal to you, like several of us as well who are here, that please let us also take a long-term view of where we're headed. Sometimes the markets do not fully reward people for the risks that they take. But I'm going to step back to share with you something. If you are planning to grow and you are planning over time to be an institution that will have a very high risk rating, irrespective of where you are anchored from. There are certain decisions with respect to growth that you have to take today, and so there is some suffering. Now, the market may not reward you fully for it right now, understandably so, but I think the picture will show over time as you move on. When we went to the UK, people said, what business were we going to do in England? And in any, in any event, that there were several Nigerian banks there. Whether anybody likes to believe it or not, we're one of the very be best banks in that environment. We are part of the clearinghouse in that environment. We are recording strong profitability in that environment. They could have marked us down at that particular point in time, but I think history has proven the fact that it was a value accretive decision. So we will continue to prove to the market um, the fact that the decisions that we take will take us to a new level. When in South Africa, people ask, what are you doing in South Africa? Obviously, it requires significant capital commitments, which could have been paid out by the way as dividends. Now, that market, whether you like to believe it or not, is just as big as Nigeria, I'm talking of South Africa, has a better risk rating than Nigeria. Now, we will succeed there the same way we've done in the UK. In five years' time, people will ask, oh my God, how, why can't we now start going to South Africa? But at that time, the ship has left the, the, or the train has left the station, all right, and would have established a strong, viable uh, business out there that will not be able to be replicated by most of our peers. So just to let you know that we're on the right track, okay, we will pay staff well, we will make sure that shareholders are adequately um, compensated as well. The issue of of um, of Ponzi schemes, but just before then, you spoke to you spoke about um, the National Theatre. I think it was it was you who spoke about that, and the fact that it's going to help significantly in terms of employment and all. Let me just say that under the auspices of the Central Bank of Nigeria, um, the entire banking industry recognizes its role, not just from a financial intermediation standpoint or an engine for growth of the economy, but the fact that we cannot exist if the economy does not do well, and if employment is not enhanced, and if security is not um, um, made better in this country. So when you see several initiatives around the coalition for COVID-19, which, by the way, sparked up a lot of interest in the market at that particular point in time, and people were asking, why are we contributing all of this? It is on record, and you can go across the world, that there has never been a public-private sector partnership that helped to prevent the surge in COVID-19, all right, like what we did in Nigeria. And it was largely done Yes, by a coalition of people, but the entire banking industry participated significantly. Now we've gone to the National Theatre. That theatre will be ready before this time next year. But it's not just the theatre. We have several, we have seven, five verticals, and it will provide employment to tens of thousands of Nigerians. And there's more and more and more. We had a bankers' retreat just yesterday that the governor of the central bank shared with the market the fact that we're going to do so much more in terms of supporting small and medium-scale enterprises. And we have to do it. We don't have another country but Nigeria. 
Um, and when you look back and see the, the issues that have happened coming from COVID, if you were never selfish as a Nigerian to grow our country, I think it is important that each and every one of us in whatever we do, even with the pain and sacrifice um, that we all have to do, we have to improve, improve our country. So the banking community will continue to do it, and you will see more and more that is going to be unveiled. We have now unveiled the Nigerian uh, uh, International Financial Center, which is the equivalent of the IF, DIFC in Dubai out here. The point is we just have to make our country stronger and better. And the banking industry, led by the central bank, is at the forefront of doing all of that. You spoke about our Q3 results. Thank you. Um, but I think let's wait and see how the year ends. Uh, but I think we'll, we will, as always, make sure that our shareholders are happy with, with the quality of results um, that, we, that we come up with. Now, the issue of around um, the unissued share capital and the statements that came out of, out of SEC, I think, uh, with respect, sorry, of CAC, with respect to the cancellation, we continue to evaluate it and we'll take the best decision that needs to be taken at the particular uh, point in time. There was a little bit of a controversy as to when it will become implemented. There are also costs we know involved in cancelling those shares as against issuing bonus shares. We'll look at all of that and take the appropriate, appropriate decision as we get there. BC Bakare, thank you. Thank you very much for your, for your trust and confidence. Um, we will never, ever, 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 ever shortchange shareholders, never. Um, people think it's just the large shareholders that matter. I think that even if you had dominance in a company and you had poor people invest, any attempt to disenfranchise them, you will also get the reward somewhat in your life, if you get the point I'm trying to make. Because whether you have a billion naira, that person's one naira is the same. It means the same thing to that person. So just to reassure everybody, we will continue to basically engage retail shareholders, we will continue to engage minorities to make sure that decisions we take, all right, remain optimal for each and every person. It's a fair point you made about the uh, claims and litigations of 1.9 trillion. Whilst we cannot be speaking about some of these legal issues here, just know that one trillion of it is a very spurious claim. It's such a shame that we live in a country where you can go to court and ask for a trillion naira without actually doing something to ensure that if there was a problem, you can, you can also lose a lot of money. Um, it's, 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 it's just too painful. But we've obtained very uh, significant legal advice from very strong lawyers, and these things don't mean anything. You know, as we move into Basel III and all of those things, we, we have to look at some of these costs, whether it's legal costs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and actually create estimates and put it as part of your um, operating uh, um, risk you know, determination. Things like this have already been taken into consideration. Your institution is extremely strong. None of these things can affect us. Uh, we've taken strong legal advice. You know, we had to disclose it uh, because some people think that uh, they can use it to actually um, um, disrupt us or force us to enter into a stupid negotiation, which is not appropriate for our shareholders and the ethical values that we stand for, and will defeat them any day. So there's no issue around it. There's no need for you to be concerned. Kazim Olaiwala, thank you very much uh, for your comments. Um, I already spoke to the issues around the board of Holdco. Um, a lot of work needs to be done. I cannot lie. We continue to improve. We can't. We've never run a bank this size. There's nobody. No reason for anybody to lie. Uh, but we will get better and better. If there's any set of people that can do it, I think we have the right board um, governing us. Uh, we have the right management staff. We have the appropriate skills and in terms of depth of people. And we'll be humble enough to tell you that we'll continue to learn to improve, to improve ourselves as we, as we move into the future. In terms of communication, uh, we will continue to make sure that we reach out, as always, to, to shareholders to let them know what we're doing. Um, capacity building is critical to us. I think if you spend a bit more time understanding and seeing access people in terms of the work that they do, in terms of contribution, in terms of not just financial contribution, but what they do to the communities in which we exist in to help deepen those markets. I don't want to speak to things around CSR because for us, it's beyond all of that. Um, I think you'll be extremely proud of your people. But once again, I want to thank you all for, for a very interesting court ordered meeting. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Herbert. Thanks. Uh, we'll now proceed to table before the meeting the subjoined resolution 
for your kind approval, which will now be read by the company secretary. Okay. Voting on the resolution will be by poll, which means that every shareholder voting in person or by proxy shall be entitled to one vote for every share that he or she holds. The statutory majority to approve the scheme is a majority representing not less than three quarter in value of the shares of members present and voting either in person or by proxy at this meeting. I confirm that some shareholders have sent in their proxy forms indicating how their votes will be cast. The subjoined resolution will be considered and if thought fees passed as a special resolution are contained in the notice of the meeting on page 53 to 55 of the scheme document, I will now read the subjoined resolution for consideration. That, one, the scheme of arrangement dated November 19, 2021, a printed copy of which has been produced for the meeting and for the purpose of identification only, signed by the chairman B and is hereby approved. Two, in accordance with the scheme of arrangement that 35 billion, 545 million, 225,662 ordinary shares of 50 Kobo each in the issued and paid up capital of the bank held by the shareholders B and are hereby transferred to assets holdings PLC. In this change for the allotment of 35 billion, 545 million, 225,622 ordinary shares of 50 Kobo each in the share capital of Hoko to the shareholders in proportion to their shareholding in the bank credited as fully paid without any further act or deed. The board of directors of the bank and is hereby authorized to take all necessary action to delist the shares of the bank from the official list of the Nigerian Exchange Limited. The memorandum and articles of, us, of, of the bank be and are hereby amended and set out in the next chart to this notice. And the board of directors of the bank be and is hereby authorized to do all such things and take all such actions as are required to give effect to the scheme, including consenting to the modifications of the scheme of arrangement or any conditions that the Securities and Exchange Commission, the Central Bank of Nigeria, and the Federal High Court, or any other regulatory authority may think fit to approve. Thank you. Yes. I hereby move the motion that the subjoint resolution just read by the company secretary be approved. Will someone please second the motion? Mrs. Bakari. Thank you, Mrs. Bakari. Thank you. And I put the motion to the meeting and ask all shareholders to vote either in favor or against. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I will briefly describe the voting process. I'd already and earlier mentioned that we have 873 shareholders details voting by proxy and holding 15,312,747,251 units of access bank representing 43.08% of the issue and fully share capital. When the shareholders physically present today came in this morning, we were all provided with a voting device that we have configured to represent your shareholdings in Access Bank. Now, the company secretary has read the subjoint resolution. We request that you kindly take a look at your respective voting devices. The button one slash A is for yes votes. The button two slash B is for a no vote. We now request that you can commence the voting process. Thank you. We'll do 20 seconds for this process. Can we have the voting process displayed as well? Thank you. Please press your respective devices. We have 15 seconds to go. 10 seconds to go. Five seconds. Let's press our devices. Three seconds, two, one. The voting has now closed. Thank you. Thank you, madam. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I will now ask you to wait patiently while the scrutineers review the results of the polls. Once the voting results are validated by the scrutineer, the scrutineer will hand the results to the company secretary who will deliver it to the chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, I will now announce to you the results of the poll for the subjoined resolution. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm representing PwC, who have been appointed as scrutineers. Um, most of these results were confirmed yesterday, as most of them came in by proxy. Uh, for the shareholders that are here, um, the shareholding has been um, checked by um, PwC. So, Company Secretary, you can announce. Please display it so that Chairman can. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have the display, please? Right. The shareholders for is 880 with number of shares of 15,320,400. And it's 100%, no vote against, no, no one abstained. So the total that we have is 880, 100% vote by all the shareholders. Thank you very much. So the motion is unanimously carried. Therefore, based on the results of the poll, I declare the motion unanimously carried. The report of the result of this meeting will be filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission for its final approval, and the CBN will be notified of the outcome of the meeting. Following the grant of the final approvals of both the CBN and the Security Exchange Commission, a copy of the results will also be submitted to the Federal High Court to enable it to sanction the scheme of arrangement and have it registered with the Corporate Affairs Commission so that it may become effective. So the report of the result will be filed, as I, as I said, and that brings us uh, to the end of this. So ladies and gentlemen, the announcement of the results has brought us to the conclusion of the business of the court ordered meeting. And I want to sincerely thank you on behalf of the board of directors of Assets Bank PLC for taking time out to attend this meeting. And I now declare this meeting closed. Thank you. National Anthem, please. National Anthem, please.
closing prayers. Thank you. Dr. Kazim, please. Thank you. In the name of Almighty Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful, and the most gracious, the owner of yesterday, the owner of today, and the owner of tomorrow. We thank you for the opportunity you have given us this morning to start this proceeding positively and end it up positively at the hand of the presidents. We are set and ready to move around to our various locations and destinations, and we beseech you support us in all our endeavors. You protect us from the pandemic. You assist this country, country to grow positively. We pray for Access Bank PLC. We pray for the board of directors the management and the staff and the entire investors. We pray to Almighty Allah to guide us right, to lead us to the positive end. In the name of Almighty Allah, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you. Congratulations.